for today's SQ Spiritual Quotient Snippet, I wanted to talk about the term higher self or higher source or all those things that say higher, 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 and why I don't use those terms. I get it, um, I, that's fine, but why I don't use it is because it makes it sound like higher self is up above me or higher source is up above me and in that it sounds like it's something I have to attain or I don't know how to attain it. Is there somewhere? Where is it? Um, and what I would rather say in this post-materialistic world from the post-material perspective, uh, which is this perspective that conscious awareness is foundational. So post-materialism, materialism said matter is foundational and we're saying, okay, that era's over. We know that, or this is where the, the science lies, as well as the experiential research lies, that conscious awareness is foundational. And our entire universe exists in conscious awareness. And so my t-shirt for today is actually pretty cool for this, because part of that then is this non-material spirit. And our spirits are like gigantic, so not drawn to size for that little diamond. And our spirits are projected through a body, um, and, and maybe not from underneath. It's really, you know, this is still uh, cartoony and uh, conceptual, but also the body. I like to call, I like to call it the biological spacesuit. So I didn't make that up. I've heard people throughout the years call it that, and I'm like, I love that um, because that's what it is. It's a biological spacesuit. Everything about it is trying to help us or help us, right? Um, it's either always helpful or helpful. And for the things that are helpful, we need to call that back to love. And that could be another topic for another day. But so this is why I don't say higher self. I say, um, I want to say lower or like a lower level um, a lot of times, but I'll say like at a more foundational level. So what do I mean by that? Um, a good example to explain this is, is something that I heard Dr. Kate Truitt talk about where one of her patients said that CBT, which is cognitive brain training or cognitive brain therapy, I forget, it's been so long since I was um, playing around with that stuff and, and we actually called it ANTS, automatic negative thoughts, kill the ANTS, kill the ANTS. And even when I was supposed to be doing that as a brain health coach, I would say flick, <laughs> flick the ANTS, but um, this is all um, a lot of cognitive work and her patient told her that this is like cleaning Mount Everest with a toothbrush. And Dr. Kate Truett was teaching something called Havening Touch. And this is one of those things like CBT that can be used um, from a coaching perspective or from um, a licensed therapy, a medical professional perspective. And I'm always learning these things as a non-licensed professional. So if you're listening to me, you know, I work in professional development and personal development. I work as a spiritual concierge. I am not a licensed therapist, but it was just a great, great way of putting it, right? As if we're trying to do it with our thoughts, especially if we're trying to beat down something with our thoughts. If I'm taught to kill the ants, kill the ants, kill the ants. Um, and part of that was saying, hey, we can't control our thoughts, but like we could, we could whack them, right? I don't want to spend my whole life playing whack-a-mole with my thoughts. If you try to like squish me down and bury me alive, I'm going to scratch my way back up. Does it really, really, really fix things um, versus other ways we could look at it and, and going a little bit more into from that conscious level of what's going on cognitively for us in our, our thoughts and attitudes and cognitions to go to something like IFS, which is internal family systems, which is... I would say more foundational because now you're dealing with the subconscious and you're dealing with this internal family of all the different parts of us. Again, something that could be used in therapy and something that could be used in coaching. But now you're getting somewhere because you approach this part lovingly. You understand if it's being helpful, right? It's not actually helpful. You understand what's its intent and then you get to know the part. If it's carrying around a burden and something that was like, hey, this actually helped me when I was like, Three years old and I was in this certain situation but like let that part like go of that burden and then show up in my internal system in a way that's more healthy and productive for the system and so then what you find is instead of having this 
mind at war with all these different parts of yourself. Eat the cookie. No, don't eat the cookie. You're terrible. Look how fat you are. Whatever it is. Um, I always had <laughs> all my stories about parts go back to my food eating. Um, but even a part that's making me like kind of stuff my face is helping me because it's distracting me from maybe a tough conversation I need to have or something like that, right? So, so if you understand this helpful slash helpful aspect of this biological space you well you, you're getting somewhere faster um another great example is lucid dreaming and there were studies charlie morley was part of with people with ptsd um same for the event havening where one lucid dream and boom you, you made like enormous pro progress with PTSD or um, event havening as a protocol, which would be something a therapist would use with someone with PTSD, one session and the PTSD was resolved versus years and years of toothbrush at Mount Everest. So again, um, there's some having, having, havening techniques I could use as a coach. Um, and then there are more havening techniques that a therapist would use. So I'm not here to, that's just an example of PTSD. I'm not here to tell you what to do if you have PTSD, but it's just to show we're going lower. We're going more foundational versus the, the toothbrush on Mount Everest. So if I could um, go to sleep one night and call to my inner child and while I'm in a lucid dream state, I can wake up and this has happened completely different going forwards versus years and years and years of like trying to remember stuff from my childhood and talking about it or whatever. Um, I mean, do what, do your own thing, do what your <laughs> makes sense, but I hope it is a love aligned approach because really, um, always love aligned approaches. Love is always the answer for that training that I took with Charlie Morley. Guess what you do when you call to your inner child or you call to your shadow part which is not a bad part, it's just in the dark. It's holding stuff you're not ready to see. So if you've ever heard shadow work and thought it sounded scary, that's not what it is. Same idea, you're calling it back to love. You're seeing your shadow in your dream and guess what he says to do? Hug it, hug it, hug, hug all the scary things. So, you know, ask what, what do you want me to know? And so this is what I've learned in life and trying everything um, that the, the, the lower you go, meaning the more foundational you go in this, post-materialistic type of paradigm, then the um, the quicker and more longer lasting, I would say forever, but you know, you can't really say forever in this biological spacesuit, the more, the it's just amazing, right? So that's why I don't say higher, 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 because spirit, again, I'll show you my t-shirt. <laughs> um, Spirit is always there, always 100%, always perfect. And if you're not feeling that through your body, in your gut, in your heart, as something that leads you to a just knowing, like intuition, um, it's there. And so unlike IQ, which is intel uh, intelligence quotient, EQ, which is emotional quotient, seen a lot in the field of professional development on technological quotient, TQ these days, that we, you know, for the the jobs of the future, you need to have these power skills and a good uh, technological quotient. That's what we wanna build, 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 up, up, up. But with SQ, spiritual quotient, your spirit is already 100%, already perfect. So rather than trying to build it up, you're trying to peel away, uncover, unobscure, um, uh, remember that it's there. So it's a little bit different, but it makes all the difference in life. and. I do think people are ready to approach solutions for themselves. Uh, and those solutions, again, would be like calling back to love, all those things that are not aligned with love. So if there's something you don't like about yourself or in the world, um, how do I call that back to love? And so it's like a love aligned action, or if we are talking about those, those helpful parts of us that are uh, carrying a burden and, and getting me to distract myself by stuffing my face. How do I call that part back to love, right? So um, it's super fascinating. And then even in the dream world, what's the answer? Hugging. Uh, if you are ever exploring people who say work with spirits who didn't cross over into the light, uh, what do they say? They say that, well, these spirits are afraid to go into the light either because they're confused or they have shame and you know what the answer is for that 
Eh, yes, you guessed it, call back to love. And so um, that was my little chat. It came out like 10 minutes here on on why I am tempted to always say lower level. Um, I, I do catch myself and try to say more foundational level, but I do not say higher, higher, higher because that just seems like really far away to me versus like the foundation is there. How do I, how do I feel that, get to that? And am I going to work with this um, in a subconscious way, at the actual uh, zero point field way? Like well, how, how low could you go? Really, how low can you go? All right, so kind of long, but that's my little spiritual quotient snippet for today. And as always, I don't know how to stop the camera. <laughs>